Hey everybody, this is Joel Toppin here, and I got a package in the mail from GMT Games, and it's uh, the long-anticipated Golan 73 Fast Action Battle Series game by uh, Michael Gustafson and Rick Young. And so if you if you followed the series, uh, the Fab Bulge game was the first game in the series, and then there was Fab Sicily, and now we have Fab Golan 73. Uh, the cover artwork is is really nice. Got a picture of the 73 war up there on the Golan Heights. Uh, the difference, I would say, in the series is that this guy comes in a smaller box. It's a slimline box, like you would see for, say, Normandy 44 or something of that nature. So that, that's, that's a departure in the series. But uh, I don't think that you really need all that much space with these particular games inside the box. So... Not to worry. Let's go ahead and look at what the contents here. All right, first of all, this is a block game. So you've got uh, two different colors of blocks. They are the Europe engulfed, Asian engulfed sized, uh, that is to say smaller blocks than what you would get with, uh, you know, say the block game on the, uh, the Great Northern War that uh, comes a little bit bigger size blocks than this one. But here you go, you got, uh, and it's the same size blocks as all the Fab Series games. You have blue, presumably blue is Israeli and green is Syrian. So, got a packing slip in here. We have Series Rule Book. Series Rule Book is, it's, it's a pretty basic series. It's not a, a terribly complex system. I would not necessarily call it simple, but it's definitely on the lighter end as war games go. The rulebook does come with an index. It is a uh, the glossy style rulebook, and in, the core rules is weighing in at about 22 pages, nicely illustrated. Uh, looks like the actually it looks like the extend uh, the the series uh, exclusive rules are packaged inside this which I think is also a departure in the series. The other games had two rule books. So, I thought that sounded a little bit long. So here you go, you have uh, the core rule book is weighing in at 11 pages. So that's a little bit, that's a little bit easier. That sounds a little bit more like what I remember from Fab Bulge. Okay. So, and then you have some exclusive rules that uh, give you some, some nuances for this particular battle as opposed to Sicily or uh, the Battle of the Bulge. So, there you go. That's the rule book. Next, we have a setup card. Everything's kind of stuck together here. We have a setup card. Shows you how to set up the game. Obviously, this is the one for the Israelis. It's one-sided. We have a setup card for the Syrians, kind of the same deal. There you go. Next we have an action matrix and an event summary table for the chit draws. You'll, you'll be drawing chits out and some of these are events and this will help you uh, to understand what to do when those are drawn. And this is double sided so that you have uh, your basic combat tables and so forth on the back. It's a little bit different from other block games, I'll tell you that. The series is a little bit different. It's a really cool block block game series. It's it's different, it's got some neat stuff in it, and uh, I, it's one of my favorite series, so uh, looking forward to playing this. There's an extended sequence of play, as well as a movement table. Okay, I remember this. Yeah, you have your. This is your basic sequence of play, and then this just expands it out. So, okay. Well, I guess there is a playbook. I think they put the scenario information in here. Yep, that's what's happening here. All right. So we have designers' notes, player notes, credits, scenarios, and examples of play. It does feel somewhat hefty. So. There's more to this than just a real simple booklet. So you have full blown examples of play in here. Pretty nice. Whole, th whole booklet is weighing in about 20 pages. So pretty cool. 
Next we have a bunch of stickers that will need to be applied to the blocks that you see there. Now this is another uh, departure from games in the series. Previous games in the series came with a full sheet of stickers and because there's not that many blocks in the game you had a spare set of stickers um, for whatever reason if you wanted to, you know, if you messed up real bad, you could, you had a spare on hand. So this is a this is a change from the earlier games, in that you have a smaller sheet of stickers, and it doesn't look like there's any spares. So of course, I, if you screw it up that bad, uh, I can almost guarantee if you call the office at GMT, they'll they'll send you a new sticker sheet. So not to worry, guys. Okay. Stickers are there, and then you're going to have one sheet of counters. Now, this is different. These are brown core counters, and they're thicker. So, this is an upgrade from other games in the series. you got thicker counters here. Um, pretty cool. They look to be... Uh, they're not the 5 eighths. It's the next size, next size down, so it's a little bit little bit bigger than your half inch counters at least that's what it looks like to me uh, I could be wrong on that but they look real nice these are most of these are chits events or assets that are going to be drawn out of a cup and then the rest of them as you can see on the back are markers they look to be really nicely centered so there you have it one sheet of counters next you have a map which I'm going to unfold for you if I can get a... Here we are. It's all stuck together. All right, so here's the map. I'll unfold it in just a moment. We'll take a look at it. Uh, GMT baggies, counters, and really the baggies are, are perfectly suitable for a game like this. You don't need a counter tray for this. Um, you have a series of four D10s. Now, this is kind of a, a cool thing that the uh, the Fab Bulge game came with black dice, and these are kind of unique. I shouldn't say kind of. These are these are a little bit different than your ordinary D10 dice in that they have the number 10 instead of a zero on them because the 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 numeral zero would be a 10 in this particular game. And then the Fab Sicily game came with four white dice. And now this one comes with your red ones. Now, why is that important? Well, because let me get some of the stickers here and show you. If you're not familiar with the series, the different colors of pips tell you what kind of dice to throw. So red pips are elite, uh, black pips are your, your regular line units, and then white pips are green. And sometimes the pip colors changes uh, change on a block as you take losses. So when you rotate this particular unit after taking a hit, the quality of, of the unit is going to degrade. And uh, on some units, it's the opposite end around. In other words, on some of these Israeli units, they're green, but they take a couple hits and they, they improve in quality. Um, so it, it depends on the on the the, the particular army in question. And that's kind of the same deal that you encounter in some of the other games. Depending on the unit, some of them improve in quality, uh, some of them degrade in quality with the hits. And so the different colored dice, since you're, you're never going to throw more than four dice for a unit, uh, it's really nice to have four dice of each color uh, for resolving combat situations. So that's kind of cool that our set of special D10s with the number 10 on them is now complete with Fab uh, Golan. So let me pause the video a moment here. I'll unfold the map and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I have unfolded the map here. It is a full uh, map sheet. So that is to say poster sized. And as with all the other Fab series of games, you have a series of, of tracks, a turn record track, some holding boxes, and it is a, an area game. That is to say, not uh, it's not the map is not divided up into hexagons. It's uh, ne neither hexagons nor point to point. It's an area map, and so here you have a map of the Golan Heights as it was in October of 1973. It's a really nice artwork. Uh, it's evocative artwork, I should say. I mean, just it looks like an old military map of the period. So. Pretty cool. I'm not sure who did the artwork on it. I don't see credits anywhere uh, on the map itself. 
but it looks really sharp here and that just kind of gives you an idea I wish I had more space to unfold it for you unfortunately I don't at the moment but that kind of gives you an idea of what you got okay here's the credits I knew they got to be in here somewhere uh, but it doesn't tell you who did the map okay I'm just gonna guess it was uh, it was Mark Simonich but it might have been Charlie Kibler too I don't know uh, it looks really nice and uh, as I said, there's not a lot of blocks in the game, but you see there's a lot of areas. So the block density is going to be pretty little, uh, pretty small. And uh, of course, some of the uh, the game counters, uh, whether they be assets or, or whatnot, will function like a unit, but the strength is not hidden. And usually the assets only have like one step strength. And so some of those will be like bunkers and they'll be positioned along here. So there you go. That's... Uh, Fast Action Battles, uh, third game in the series, Golan 73. I'm Joel Toppin, and that's what comes inside the box.